Bible study and you that are sitting at home and and picking us up on Facebook Live and all of you that throughout Arkansas, Atlanta, and wherever you may be, we thank God for you tuning in on this Bible study tonight. And by the way, if you have any questions any question regarding our teaching please give us a call at 773-488-5696 and we will gladly sit down and share with you uh, this word of God this apostolic doctrine that we teach every uh, Wednesday and Tuesday during the week and we thank God for you. We thank God for you. We love to get questions from you. We love your comment, your feedback on uh, what we're doing here at Lighthouse. We are conveniently located in Chicago in the Chatham community, 7759 South Eberhard Avenue. And by the way, you ought to call a friend and tell somebody that Lighthouse is on the air. Amen. And let's sit down and feast from the table of the Lord. Amen. We thank God. We thank God for you, you, and you. Amen. Uh, we ask you to continue to be praying for uh, the sick, shut in. Pray for our spiritual leaders. Pray for our government leaders and our country as a whole, our world as a whole, it is in trouble. We are in trouble. There's a song that we sing years ago, said there's a storm out on life's ocean and it's headed this way. And if you're not anchored in Jesus, you will surely drift away. And these are trying times now. Lord. These are challenging times. Your faith will be tested. Yes. It will be tested. And we want to be rooted and grounded in the word of God. That's the only thing going to hold us there. Preacher preached a sermon one time. And he said that we ought to be like a tree that is planted by rivers of water tree long as it's planted by the rivers of water it's going to go down the roots going to go down and it would wrap around the rock down in the earth so when the storm come the tree will lean over surely but it will not loose that rock it's wrapped around that rock that rock is god's word and anytime we can wrap our life and our lifestyle around God's word, it will hold us. It will keep us anchored mm -hmm. like a ship when it dropped the anchor. It might rock, but it won't go nowhere. It won't move. And that's the way we ought to be as children of God. Our soul, our, our soul should be wrapped around God's word. We should be meditating on God's law day and night. That's what's going to keep us. 
Singing a song is not going to keep you. Shouting is not going to keep you. A lot of people sing a song and get out and, and curse you out, shout and be ready to fight the next minute. But it takes the Spirit of God, the Word of God, to keep us anchored in Jesus. All right, tonight we're gonna we're gonna uh, continue uh, our series we we was been teaching on uh, preparing, preparing. Uh, to meet God we are preparing to meet Jesus amen why pastor would you say we are preparing to meet Jesus simple reason why because the Bible tell us that we are going to see him one day the Bible tell us he left on record. The angels, when he ascended up into heaven, the angels said, you men of Galilee, why stand here looking up in the sky? That same Jesus that you see that was grafted up into heaven, he's coming back in like manner. And that's why we live like we live because we are looking for him. That's why we prepare ourselves. We have great expectation yeah. of his return. Now, I didn't say when he was going to return, but we are to prepare for his return. We don't want to wait till the last minute. Like those virgins did, you know. Those five foolish virgins, they wait till the last minute. And the Bible said when the bridegroom showed up, the, he took them in, the chain and the doors was what? Shut. Shut. Other word, it's too late. It's too late to start getting ready. You have, we have to be prepared. We have to be ready. And anytime you are expecting someone to come, you are to prepare for their arrival. Amen. You have to prepare. It's foolish for you not to prepare, and you know you got guests coming. And you don't prepare your house for you get. Y'all, y'all, y'all know that. <laughs> you got people coming over your house. You want to get clean up everything. You, <laughs> you sweep your vacuum. You make sure everything is in order. Yes, right, do. Shirley? Make sure everything is in order. Yes. Well, that's the way we ought to make sure our lives are in order. We're expecting a guest to come. Thank you, Lord. That's right. <laughs> We are expecting the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords to show up. So we got to prepare ourselves. And uh, uh, I, I want the, the, the foundation of scripture. Well, let's go back to uh, Romans, the 13th chapter. And we'll read the 10th and the 14th verse. Romans 13. Romans 13, and started, to, I think, the 10th verse we would go there. Love worketh no ill to its neighbor. Therefore, love is the, the fulfilling of the law. And that knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. Now, this is the writer. The Apostle Paul is writing to who? He run, he's writing to the Roman church. He's writing to church people. He's writing to those that believe that Jesus Christ is coming back. So he says to them, and that knowing, you know the time, and knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of your sleep for our salvation is, is what? Nearer. Nearer than when we first believed. Paul, why are you saying that? Why do you say, knowing the time, look at your surrounding. Look what's going on in our world. And then meditate upon what Jesus said before he left. 
Jesus gave us some signs to look for. That 24th chapter of St. Matthew, he gave us some signs to look for. And they are slowly approaching us. And you know what's so uh, bad about this situation that we are experiencing? There ain't nothing we can do about it. That's what's so bad about it, Shirley. It would be bad if, if we had a remedy, if we had a solution, and we said, oh, we can fix this. But what's happening? We can't even fix it. <laughs> we can't fix it, uh, Shirley. We can't fix it. So that tell me that is coming from a higher power. That's coming from somebody that allowed this to happen. And man can't do nothing. Nothing you can do. And what's so bad about it is one calamity after another one. How much can we bear? How much can this economy hold without breaking, collapsing? These are signs, Paul said, knowing the time that is high time to wake out of your slumber and your sleep. Tell yourself, soul, soul, I got to get right. If I'm not right, I got to get my house in order. Because something is fitting to take place. There is something is fitting to happen. Verse 12, it says what? The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness and let us put on the arm of light. It's time to make some changes. It's time to stop dancing by your own music. It's time to stop seeking your own desires. It's time to stop seeking your own pleasures. It's time to seek God. Because we see. We see what's happening. The old writer, the old, old teacher used to say, put two and two together. Put two and two together. Start looking at your surroundings. Start looking at the scriptures. And you will get the picture. Paul said the night is far spent. We don't have too much longer. We don't have the time that we once had. The night is far spent. Far spent. Now he didn't say we are, we are approaching the night hour. Uh-uh. He's telling us the buck of the time in the past is far spent. So we don't have very much, too much on them. The night is far spent and the day is at hand. Somebody said if I can just make it through the midnight, if I can get past midnight. Uh, I, I've heard that uh, many medical doctors, when people were serious, it's something about midnight. Something about midnight that bring changes. Something gonna happen. Say if a person is very ill, and if they can make it through that midnight, make it from the p.m. to the a.m. If they can get through that critical hour, we see a a, a, a faint of hope. We believe that they can make it. And Paul says here <laughs> that it's far spent. Midnight didn't pass. Something is getting ready to come forward. So seeing this, we ought to do what? Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering and wokeness, not in strife and envying. Paul said we got to we got to get our house in order. We gotta <laughs> If y'all allow me to say, let, let, let me, let me uh, go in here and, and clean up the kitchen. Wash them dirty dishes. 
clean the stove and the refrigerator, clean the living room, the hallway. I'm cleaning up. I'm preparing. I'm, I'm moving some stuff. I'm getting rid of some stuff. <laughs> I got some stuff that I've been holding on to. And that stuff won't allow me to give God all that he's asking for. That stuff. Y'all know what happened when, when, when Saul uh, was called to be the first king of Israel. Y'all know what he did? Among the stuff. He went and hid among the stuff. <laughs> what stuff are you hiding behind? What stuff are you hiding among? Let me tell you something. You can't hide from God. That's right. You can take all the stuff and cover yourself up in God's steel. The Bible says his eyes. All things are open and naked unto him whom we have to do. You can't hide from him. So we got to get rid of that stuff. We got to clean up. Well, what, what are we doing? We are getting ready. We are preparing our house. Paul talks about this house. If this old house be revolved, we got another. This He was talking about this old flesh of ours. See, this old flesh here going to leave, going to die one day. And you got to have a spiritual home somewhere. You got to have another home. Amen. Paul says here, cast off the work of darkness. Now, what is he talking about, work of darkness? Somebody help me out. Is he talking about, it's 12 o'clock at night? Sing. You got to get rid of that darkness. This darkness here is talking about sin. That's what he's talking about. Cast off the work. Right. Of sin, darkness, and let us put on the arm of light. What is the arm of light? Salvation. Get me Ephesians 6 and 11. We're going to find out what the arm of it is. <laughs> Ephesians 6 and 11. He said, he said cast off the work of darkness and put what on? The, whole the armor of light. And we're going to find out whether the armor of light, Ephesians 6 and, and 6 chapter Ephesians and the 11th verse, I believe. Put on the whole armor of God. Let's start at verse 10. Finally, my brother. Finally, my sisters and brothers. Finally, after all that I've said, after all that I shown you after all that I've taught you this is the last thing that you need to do out of all that you've done you shouted you 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 paid your tithes you worked at the church you sang in the choir you preached you served on the deacon board you were faithful to the house but this is the final thing that you need to do. Finally, my brother, be strong in the Lord and what? And in the power of his might. How am I going to be strong and in the power of God's might? You got to do something. My God. You got to put on God's armor. Yeah. God got it. We are soldiers. We say that. We sing the song, I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. Well, if we're a soldier in God's army, then we got to put on God's armor. That's right. <laughs> Amen. We, we got to put God's armor on. We can't be going out here with our own stuff. Our stuff ain't going to work. That's right. You know what our stuff is made of? Fig leaf religion. <laughs> That's what Adam and Eve put on when they try to cover their sin. Fig leaf religion. That's what I want to like. But Paul said to the church at Ephesus, you put on the whole armor of God. Yeah. This is what you got to do finally after you've done all this. You done shouted, you done sang, you done preached. But how's your life? How's your life? 
Put on the whole armor of God. Read on, daughter. That you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. That you will be able to fight against your adversary. That your enemy is the devil. Yes, it is. Sometimes the writer says, I have met my enemy. When I looked in the mirror, I looked at him face to face. <laughs> Sometimes our enemy is ourself. Y'all don't believe that, do you? Most of the time, our enemy, Brother Billy, is ourself. That's right. Our flesh is our enemy. Our flesh is warring against the spirit of God that is in us. That's our enemy. Our adversary. The spirit of God is telling you that, that the walk, don't walk in the counsel of your flesh. Well, your flesh is going to cause you to sin. Talking about getting out of a house in order. He says here, Put on the arm of God that you might be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. You'll be able to stand against the tricks of your enemy, the tricks of your adversary. Because Paul understood this one thing. There is no good thing that dwelleth in my flesh. All right. Amen. Nothing in my flesh is good. Right. Hallelujah. That's why we need the Spirit of God, the Holy Ghost. Because if you don't, this old flesh will make you have you doing some stuff. Paul says here, you'll be able to stand against the tricks of the wild of your enemy, Satan the devil. Now this is what, read on daughter. Verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rules of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So, you're not fighting against nothing, current. <laughs> you're not fighting against, don't you know the devil operate under a spirit? Is that spirit called a mock? A, a Mazda in the, in the Greek language, I think it's Era Mazda. Mm -hmm. I believe that I might have that right. You are fighting against a spirit, and it's not just no little spirit, these are spirits of power, these are spirits that was sent out by Satan, the devil himself. Just like God got angels, the devil got angels. He have given them power and authority to go out and break havoc, wreak havoc on God's people. And 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 that's uh, not I mean talking about just people that are whole. Even if <laughs> those people that are out there practicing singing. Many of them don't want to live like that. But they have no power. They Satan had that these demon devils has overpowered them. That's why you have to put on the whole arm of God. He said, You don't wrestle. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities. Demons that got Authority from their master, Lucifer. We don't rise against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against power, against rulers of darkness of this world. They rule in this atmosphere that we're in. God is over the atmosphere that we live. But God allows Satan to operate in this area. God also has angels operating in this area too. 
That's why many times the enemy try to take you out and, and you escape, say, by the skin of your teeth. It wasn't because you were so smart. It wasn't because you, you outsmarted them. It was that angel of God that was there and delivered you from it. Because you were wrestling against some, it, you, were, you were dealing with the smartest fellow, <laughs> the smartest man in darkness, you were dealing against his power. And don't think you can outsmart Satan. He, been, he done took down a lot of great people. He done took down a lot of great men and a lot of great women. And you just a little speckle on the wall for him. You have no power against him. That's why it's necessary to be born again. That's why it's necessary to have the Holy Ghost. He said against powers, against rulers of darkness, of this world, against spiritual wickedness, in high places. In authoritative places. In places. That he is the ruler. So therefore. Knowing this. Paul, Paul really educated his audience. His readers. His audience. The church at Ephesus. He let them, he, I mean, he, he fed them. He didn't give them no sugar water. He gave them that pure word that was able to give them knowledge about their enemy and knowledge about this God that they serve. We got to know something about this God we serve. You know, you can be in the best position in the world. You can come from the most influent family in the world. But if you don't know you from that influent family and have power, the, death, the, the uh, people will mess over you. But when you drop a name, <laughs> y'all know that, y'all don't drop names before. You get right, you gotta know somebody that's about something, no, they got no ability to somebody, you drop that name in a minute. <laughs> and people will, they give you some respect then. Right, Shirley? They'll give you some respect. You drop a name. And we got a name we can drop. <laughs> when that enemy come at us, we got a name we can drop. <laughs> and that fellow respected. So the Bible tells us, even Satan himself, he trembles at that name. <laughs> Although he, he's sitting in high places, but he trembled at the name of Jesus. That's who we prepared to meet. <laughs> That's who we prepared ourselves for. Uh, it says, well, for a read. Take unto you the whole armor of God, that she may be able to withstand in the evil day, and having done all to stand. Because Paul is saying, you going to meet this fella. You going to come in contact with this fella. And this fella going to be throwing all kind of thoughts in your mind. He gonna be messing with your mind. He gonna be messing with your body. He gonna be messing with everything that pertaining to you to try to discourage you. He said, "Now nah, you 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 got to you got to uh, wherefore you got to take on the whole arm of God that you might be able to withstand against the evil day, cause they coming." To, right now, we're entering into some evil days now. People have been, no jobs. What, 30,000 people? Or 30 million people out of work? Landlord saying, I'm going to put your eyes out. You don't pay me? Stores, businesses shutting down. All these things have then turned around. These things are happening. And with, along with this pandemic, and now we're getting floods, we're getting hurricanes. Where are you going to run to? Where are you going to hide? Who are you going to trust? Who, who you got your, who you, did you, who do you, who are you putting your trust in? Jesus. Troublesome time. 
These are the signs. These are the, the, the night is far spent. You got to be able to stand. You got to be able to stand. And if you don't have on these arm of God, my brother, you're going to be wiped away. You will not be able to stand against the wild of the devil. And Paul is telling the church this. This is what he's getting the church. He's letting them to know you, you, it, 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 if you was playing, you better stop playing. You better get serious. Because the night is far spent. We ain't got too much time. Now, I'm not saying that Jesus is coming tomorrow. I'm not saying that. And and be if I be honest with you, for some of us, he could come tomorrow. He could come tonight. We could lay down tonight, go to sleep, and won't wake up. It's happening. So, therefore, we ought to be prepared. When you lay down, you ought to be prepared. You ought to be ready. If you're not ready, get ready. What can I do? I can make some changes. I can start repenting. That's the first thing. Start repenting. Because we're looking at the signs. They're here. They're here. Read on. Verse 14. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness. First of all, you got to get out of that false religion. Mm -hmm. <laughs> You got to get out of that church that you got to stop following that Jesus that don't have no power. <laughs> a lot of folk going to church and worship with a Jesus that can't even deliver them from their sin. They still sinning. They end up in church sinning. I wouldn't serve a God that could not keep me from sinning. I'm, I'm telling you the truth. But when I first gave up my the, the, the world, the desire, and I wanted to live holy, I wanted to know this God that I'm going to serve, I got to know something about him. I need to know something about him. Because if I'm going to go from one plateau to another doing the same thing, it don't make sense. You jump out of the skillet into the fire. Or you get out of the fire and get in the skillet, you still going to burn. <laughs> so I got to get in something that's going to get me out of the situation that I'm in. I'm, I'm tired. I didn't. I, 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 I was catching hell when I was out there in them streets. I don't want to <laughs> come to church and still be catching hell. I mean, you're going to have trouble, but at least... In your trouble, God said, I'll be there with you. I'll see you through. I'll sustain you. I'll uphold you. Stand there for having your loin. Wait, wait, you stop it. Yes, stand there for having your loin. What? Gird about with truth. With, with what? Gird about with truth. With truth. Not no lie. Preacher getting up there and, and preaching, getting on your emotion, you shouting off your emotion. Come out a dog named Yellow. <laughs> and you get happy, go to crying and shouting. He tell you some joke. You need to hear some solid word of God. Yes, you need to hear something that's going to show you yourself. Yes, the playing with people's. Take the word. Word going to keep you. Yeah. That's why David said, Thy word have I what? Yeah. David told God, I, I'm taking your word and, and I meditate upon it day and night so I can be like that tree that planted by the river of the water. I'm going to bring forth fruit and they're going to be righteous fruits. They're going to be fruits of truth. Yeah. Fruits of deliverance. Fruits that will keep me. Fruits that will feed me. Amen. 
that I thirst no more. Yeah. This is what we got to do. We got to stop playing around. Stop playing church. Playing with people alive. God call you to minister. God call you to be a leader. Be that leader. Dedicate yourself to God and God's word. Then you can help God's people. Read that again, verse 14. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and have it on the breastplate of righteousness. Put on the breastplate of righteousness. Not hypocrisy. Not hypocrite. Pretending. Put on the breastplate of righteousness. Where well, is that breastplate of righteousness? When the, when the priest, God had to set up the, when the priest robed himself and got ready to come before God, he put on that breastplate, the 12 tribes of Israel representing Israel, the 12 tribes. This is what God had when, when he designed the temple and he told Moses, this is what the priest had to do. He was representing God. He was representing the 12 tribes standing before God. That breastplate of righteousness saying you can trust me. I'm going to do what's right. I, I, I'm standing in the stead of God. Put on the breastplate of righteousness. And what? And your feet shot with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Put your feet sharp with the preparation of what? Gospel of peace. What gospel? What gospel? The gospel of Jesus Christ. The gospel of the anointed one. <laughs> the gospel of Emmanuel. God is with us. Amen. The gospel yeah. of Jesus Christ. The one that came to take away the sins of the world. Yeah. There's a gospel out here that they preach and not taking away sin. Mm -hmm. Because folks are hearing it every Sunday and they still practicing sin. So that gospel don't have no power. It takes the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's what Paul is telling these people. Now, if anybody ought to know, Paul should be the one that know. Because Paul, Paul had a gospel he was preaching. When he found out that gospel that he was preaching, <laughs> it, it, it wasn't adequate. <laughs> That's why Jesus, he, Paul was a great man. Don't get me wrong, he was a great man. And he loved God. He loved, Paul had a love for God. That's why he was going around persecuting the church of Jesus Christ. Because he thought that these people come up trying to say there's another God. He didn't understand. He was brought up under the foot of Gamaliel saying, Hear, O Israel, the Lord thy God is one. That's what he was taught the law. And here these people talking about there's another one named Jesus. Mm -hmm. He didn't realize Jesus was God. <laughs> he didn't realize that it was God, the spirit of God in Jesus Christ, bringing the world back to him. Because Adam sold us out. And Jesus was the second Adam. He had to come and redeem us back. Hallelujah. And it was God, the spirit of God in Jesus bringing the world back to us. That's why when we realize that and we see that it was Jesus died on the cross and had did no sin, yeah. but he died for our sin. Yeah. That's when we ought to go down in repentance. Yeah. Uh -huh. That's when we ought to say, Lord, Lord. hallelujah, thank you for dying for me. Yes, How would the one should have been dead? Yeah. But you hung out there, you hey. suffered hey. for me. 
That is, that is the gospel of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. There's any other gospel out there, Paul said, <laughs> it, it came from Diablo. <laughs> go to Galatia. Go, let's go to Galatia right quick. Uh, how much time we got here? Let's go to Galatia. Galatia in the first chapter. First chapter of Galatia. This one book back behind the Ephesians. Galatians 1 and, and 6. Read. I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ into another gospel. What? Another gospel? Yeah, they, they, they preach to me every Sunday. So I'm teaching them the, even tonight. Bible class, they, they teaching this other gospel. Read on. Which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and will pervert the gospel of Christ. There are some out here Man, you ain't got that, that apostolic, that P.O. You ain't got to do all that. They will pervert. They will change the gospel of Jesus Christ. And when you change, you write up a document. And you write that document, that contract up. And a certain letter, you can go in and change the lettering of that document. And that contract is no good. It's void. Certain words you can take out of, take all the authority and power away from you. And this is what some of us had did to the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's why folks are going to church and still practicing singing. 